lust, addiction to substances, pornography, alcoholism, sinful thoughts. These are just some of the things that many are about to break free from today. Because the four effective strategies to resist sin, lust, and addiction are about to be revealed right now. Featuring Dr. Miles Monroe. Stay tuned. Strategy number one, get your soul out of the world and into the kingdom. First Thessalonians 5 23, may your whole spirit, soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And this is important for us to understand. We are spirit, soul and body. And I'm going to break it down because this is the first step to get our soul out of the world and into the kingdom. We as human beings are created with a body, a spirit and a soul. Your body is simply an outer shell. You are not your body. Your body is what you live in, which is why when you die, your body goes into the ground. But your spirit, your life force, your essence is still alive. And hopefully it goes with God and your soul is your mind, your will and your emotions. That is, in essence, the seat of who you are. So, again, you are a spiritual being. You have a soul, your mind, will and emotions, and you live in a body. The first step is actually not in dealing with the body, but it is in dealing with the soul, the mind the will and the emotions. You see, your soul is who you are. You are a spirit. That is what you are. But who you are is your soul. And when your mind, will and emotions are protected from the world around us and are brought into where God is, his kingdom, then your soul, your mind, will, and emotions will be protected from the temptations and really the struggles that lead to addiction. So I'm going to play a clip from Dr. Miles Monroe. He breaks something down when it comes to the body, spirit, and soul. I really want you to take notice of this because the way he breaks it down is powerful. Check this out. It's really a battle for the soul. Let's talk about the soul, the mind. Write this down quickly. The mind is the center of the soul. What is the soul? The soul is an integration of three parts. Please write this down. The soul is the integration of the mind, the will, and the emotions. In other words, those three things make up your soul. And the soul is the medium between the spirit and the body. Now, write this down. The soul receives from the senses and deposits in the spirit. Very important. What does the soul do? It receives from the senses. In other words, hearing, tasting, seeing, touching, and feeling all come to the senses, but they all go to the soul. They go to your mind, your will, and your emotions. So whatever you see, touch, taste, feel, or hear goes to your soul. Now, if your soul takes it and deposits it into you, which is your spirit, then you got to make sure to regulate what the soul is picking up from the senses. That's why Jesus said, take heed what you hear. Take heed means be selective. Regulate your hearing. Uh, choose what you want to listen to. Why? He said, because it will, it will leaven the whole lump. My God. It will mess up your whole life. Your soul receives from the senses and deposits in your spirit. But here's the other side. It's a little bit difficult now. The spirit reveals through the soul to the body. Now, here's a problem. I need some help. Can you help me? Come here, son. Can you help me? I want you to stand up here. I got to do this visually so everybody can see this. Stand right in the middle of them. Face that way. Now, this is the battle that you're facing right now, every day, every moment of the day. This is your spirit. This is your body this is your soul now your body 
it's getting information from what it sees, what it hears, what it tastes, what it touches, what it feels. And it takes it and transmits it to the soul. The soul then takes it and gives it to your spirit. All right? And when the spirit gets that information from the soul that it got from the body, the spirit now has to deal with this information. problem once the spirit get all this information inside of it when the spirit wants the body to do something who does the spirit talk to the soul so the spirit gives the, the directs to the soul and tells the body what to do now you got a couple of problems here sometimes the body don't want to do what the spirit wants it to do so the soul is in a battle Is what you call a mental battle, a battle of the soul. So your spirit says, the information that I got from the body is unrighteous. And the soul says, but that's all the body gave me. The soul cannot give the body, or the spirit rather, what the body didn't receive. Faith comes by what? Hearing. And you hear through what? The body. So the body hears something, the soul takes it, believes it, and gives it to the spirit. Now the spirit receives and conceives it. If your spirit has the spirit of God in it, it's not a spirit that's missing there, it's on the inside of the spirit. That spirit disagrees with what the spirit just received. And the spirit of God says, now that is not righteous information. So the spirit of the man tells the soul of the man, that is not righteous. Tell the body that is not righteous. Tell the body to change source of information. Body says, no, I like how it feels. Soul, come on, feel it. And so the soul feel it from the body. And the soul says, it does feel okay. And the spirit says, but it ain't right. So the spirit says, soul, tell the body, stop it. Body say, feels sensually good. Don't you like it, soul? And soul said, mm hmm, I know it's wrong, but it feels emotionally good. And so the spirit loses. And now the spirit is downloading junk that's starving it to death. You know who's the most important part of that whole trinity? It's that soul, fella. That soul. Because that soul could decide to reject or accept the power of the soul. So the soul takes from the body, gives to the spirit, but the spirit also takes from the spirit and gives to the soul for the body. So the body can only do what the soul makes it do, and the soul can only do what it accepts from the spirit. That's why the Bible says, do not walk in the flesh, but walk in what? The spirit, and you not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Thank you very much, O oh man. All of that is man. Thank you very much. And wow, so there you have it. So as you can see, the first step to really finding freedom is protecting the soul, making sure that the soul is influenced not by worldly things that we pick up through our body senses, but to make sure that our soul is influenced by the kingdom of God. So how do you renew the mind? How do you renew this, the will? How do you renew the emotions? By feeding your mind things that relate to God. You do this by reading the Bible. You do this by watching things that relate to the kingdom of God, that relate to Christ, that relate to the things of God. Whenever you influence your soul, your mind, your will and emotions through things that have to do with God, you are renewing your mind, renewing your soul, which will allow it to be free from the things that lead to temptation and addiction. Now, here's the thing. 
Every time you watch these videos, every time you go to church, anytime you open the scripture, you are flushing out things that your soul was contaminated with and renewing it with a transformation. This is why Paul wrote in Colossians 3, 2, set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. Again, Paul wrote in Romans 12, 2, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, by the renewing of your mind. That's step one. Step two. Now, this is huge. Make specific declarations to God that you will remember about the things you will not do. And so what that means is you're not just going to make a general statement to God saying, I would not do I will not ever sin again or I will never get drunk again. But you're going to make a specific declaration about something that you will not do that can lead to the main issue. For instance, if your issue is pornography, instead of saying, God, I will never look at porn again, um, you want to get more specific than that. You're going to want to write down a vow, a declaration that you're making to God to say, God, I will not visit this particular site or if you're having an issue with alcoholism, you're not going to just say, I will never get drunk again, but you're going to be more specific. You're going to write down and make a vow, a declaration of God. I will not go to this place. Perhaps it's a place where you easily get tempted or I will not drink this certain thing. And so when you make specific declarations like that, number one, you will remember them. And number two, it will give you the ability to not go to that point, that extreme where you are in sin. So write down specific declarations to God about things you will not do and you will remember them. Number three, resist the enemy. Who is that? Satan with the word. You know, one of the most powerful things that you can do when you are going through times of temptation is to remember scripture because what that does is empower you to resist. You can be in a situation where something of this world is just really coming against you and trying to tempt you to do something in the heat of battle like that. You have to go to the scripture. Even Jesus did that when Jesus was fasting and Satan came and tempted him. <laughs> what Jesus did was he resisted the devil with the word. Satan tried to get him to do certain things and he had the word of God to combat that. So I want to give you a powerful tool. I'm going to email to you the scripture and temptation breaking system. It's a document that has the most powerful scriptures relating to temptation so that when you are in the heat of battle, whether you're being tempted with looking at something pornographic or you're being tempted to sleep with someone or you're being tempted to abuse some substance, no matter what it is, this document will have these scriptures that when you read them, they will empower you to resist. Email me at jaron at aocnet.org and I will send that to you. It's a powerful system that once you take hold of it, you will see the amazing ability you have in God's word. Step four, take each day at a time. Take each day at a time. One thing that Jesus said was each day has enough trouble in itself. Jesus said we should not even worry about tomorrow, but really focus on today, maximize today. And so in your fight, to do what's right. Don't worry about tomorrow or next week or next month. Just make sure you do right today. Make sure you do what you need to do today. And what you will find is if you maximize each day and take it one day at a time, you will look back and months will have gone by and you will realize that the thing that you used to be tempted by and caught up in, you haven't done in months. And when you take it one day at a time, following these steps, what are the steps? Number one, Get your soul out into the world, out of the world and into the kingdom. That means influencing your mind, your will and emotions with the things of God and not things of the earth. Number two, make specific declarations that you write down to God about certain things that you will not do. Number three, resist the enemy with the word of God. And number four, by taking each day at a time, you will see that the things that you used to be caught up in will be things in the past. And then you will be able to assist someone else to break free. 
I'm telling you, if you follow this guide, you will see the deliverance. And again, write me at jaron at aocnet.org. I'm here to pray with you, and I'm here to send you that scripture and temptation breaking system. So email me, and you got it. Because we are living at times where Satan is using media to try to get people away from God. But as you can see, the spirit is using media today to get people to God. Thank you for joining, listening, and I'll see you next time. Be blessed.